Okay, whenever you're ready. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rishi, for giving an opportunity for our networks to share something we did with Robert at the Microsoft Ignite. At Microsoft Ignite, Robert demonstrated the exchange load balancing to the uh, party, uh, the attendees out there, and we are happy to share that they chose the load balancer from our networks. Uh, we run on the AHV, so if you look into the uh, AHV hypervisor, this is the version, and uh, they, ran, they ran the exchange 2016 load balancer. We were able to install and load balancer for array networks. The latest version is 8.6030. This is one of the version that they install. It's running with a small footprint of two GB memory and two CPU, which is basically means even with a small footprint, we are able to achieve like four gigabit of throughput with the array solutions. Now I'm going to share how we can install and make solution with it is you, you can you guys can actually go to our array network sites it's arraynetworks.com you can actually register yourself as partners in the support site or you can actually link to the try me site once you have a nutanix setup run for the ahv or vmware or hyper-v we are certified for all the three you can actually request for either a load balancer or a vpn solution that runs for both uh, 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 uh for both and we should be able to demonstrate the solution for the uh, for this uh, for for different applications. Now, what we are going to do today is very simple. We are going to give you information of the load balancing. Uh, a recent demo that we did for uh, with Nutanix at the Microsoft Ignite. Uh, once you are able to download, you should be able to see a page like this. You go to you have an access to our virtual editions. And we have on our website, this is actually a support network of that. You can actually request for access for this site from our support team. They will give you an access depending on a demo or a partner capacity that you have with us. You should be able to download the latest version, 8.6030 KVM. This is a, a image that is available, which is compatible with uh, Nutanix for the VPN. And if you're looking to demonstrate a uh, VPN services, we can actually download the KVM image, a uh, little big image, so we divide into two. You can, you know, concentrate it within 7-zip or, uh, uh, or the WinRAR, and it should give you the uh, image. Once you're able to download the image, the simplest thing that you can do is you can go on the, I would say, the image configuration, upload this file. So let's say if we have something here. This image file, we can also be a raw image or we can actually be a QCOW2. Both the options are available with array networks. When you are able to see uh, a, a file in the system, you are able to create a uh, VM with us. To create a VM is very simple. Uh, let me create one for you just to give you an example. Click Create VM, give a name, VAPV demo. Description if something needs to be do with specific customer, let's say I'm going to say test. And then uh, 2v CPU is good to start, memory 2 is fine. Uh, remove the CD ROM, we don't need them. Add from the image library, uh, bus type IDE and say we have the array networks out there so yeah we have a couple of them let's take, choose one of them the size required is approximately 40 gb click add and let's go to the next try to make sure you have at least two NICs available if you have to do in line click your networking like say the first one uh, i'm going to add the uh, uh, zero because i don't have the ip right now the ips are already available in the vm that we will demonstrate for you so if you see you have a name vcpu memory uh, disk you have given the disk type id uh, size 40 gb uh, two instances to minimum which is good and click save you can actually once you save it is it creates a vm for you and you can actually uh, click to uh, power on. We already have an instance running on, so we are going to launch the one which is previously installed. Let's click the one, and you should be able to see a console. Uh, one of the important things that I would like to add before you boot up, please make sure you actually do two updates to the Nutanix ACLI. 
is one disable the hyper v uh, clock for the vm name the vm name could be an example like here if you're using dash uh, that's a uh, special character uh, make sure you actually uh, follow this schema to uh, disable the clock and also enable uh, the serial code so you can uh, upgrade to new versions once you are done this and you boot up you will see a running version of the system uh, when you run a show version in the initial one, you might not have the license. Please contact Aaron Networks. You have all the information when you download the trial to how to reach us to uh, get the license. We can give you 30, 60, or 90 days license depending on your partnership uh, levels with us, and you're all ready to start a uh, function. Today, we are going to show you how we did the load balancing for the uh, uh, exchange load balancer. We have exchange 2016 load balancer. We are going to load balance the OA both with SSL and without SSL offloading. So you can see the difference between the two. Uh, this was uh, something that we did for the Microsoft Ignite uh, uh, attendees with Robert. So let's say you have an exchange. I have what different virtual services. One virtual service is running on say 201, 211, which is doing the load balancing. And the other one is basically doing a direct access to the uh, exchange services. We can do both TCP based and layer seven HTTPS load balancing for you. So if I run the first one, which is directly going to the server, we're doing a simple load balance. You will see the circle takes a little bit of time because there is an SSL offloading which needs to be done by the server on the Nutanix. However, if we actually end up doing something, a similar thing on the, 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 on the load balancer by doing SSL offloading, you will find the performance of the action service is much better than what you are seeing here. So I'm just making sure you see how long does it take before we end up doing the other function. I'm just refreshing it, but it still takes time. So let me do the other one. This is 211, which is actually doing the load balancer for array, and you see these pages already. So the significant performance enhancement is the SSL offloading and the load balancing compared to a direct software-based load balancing or the TCP based load balancing that might be available with the free software. So if you see, the difference was uh, notably uh, uh, seen there in the terms of first access. And of course, this will differ how you actually log in and do all your uh, operations, which is upload, download, and other things. So let me quickly go to the array networks, what we have configured, and show you a simple example. I'm going to open the access, the pre-configured system. The default password is array admin. Uh, I didn't have to log in because it's already logged in. And what I did, I created simple functions is, uh, before I created the virtual services, the first step I did was create the servers. The two servers are TCP, where I'm not doing SSL offloading, goes to the backend servers on port 403. The other two servers that I have are HTTPS, which basically means I am going to do SSL offloading, encryption, and decryption for the backend services. Now, because we are strong, the SSL, and this is actually running on the same AHP hypervisor, because we have uh, specific SSL crypto uh, algorithms and the library, uh, libraries, uh, which is not an open uh, uh, open SSL, it gives you a, a advantage of doing the SSL offloading with Array Networks, and you just saw the performance in how you access the exchange applications. The, other, the next thing I would do is create a group with them. You know, a group basically means how the different servers will be load balanced. I'm doing an insert-based cookie load balancing, which is a recommended function from the uh, Microsoft uh, policy. So I have two servers. I'm doing a cookie-based load balancing, and the cookie setting are basically you can encrypt them. You can actually give different uh, uh, expiration, you can actually make them uh, secure only, which is another good option. So you don't have to do I rules or different things with it. And then you can also run HTTP only. Right now, I have a read only function with this system, so I can't change. I can't do any changes. The other function that I can do is once I have done the, uh, uh, so, uh, the uh, server policy and the uh, grouping, I can actually create uh, load balancers. If someone is actually doing uh, request to the HTTP code, it would, it, I can actually click a simple thing and redirect them to do HTTP, which is basically so simple to uh, do HTTP redirect. So I just enabled a few functions out there, which basically means if the request comes from HTTP, send it to HTTPS and things like that. And this all are helping me to create quick informations and create a 
ask for order for IP forwarding so I can log the actual IP, I can send them as header, cookie, or all of them depending on how your configurations are. Generally, with the exchange, it would be a header option that is uh, of, uh, captured by the uh, exchange services in the backend. Uh, the last thing I do is the SSL settings. For the SSL setting, we are SNI enabled, TLS 1.2204 in width. Uh, what I do is uh, because I'm doing back to back, so I will be do, uh, ensuring that the backend services also are encrypted when they are sent. So I'm not using any services here, but if you look into the uh, advanced settings, I'm using TLS 1.2 and some of the specific backend uh, encryptions, which are mostly ECC or uh, uh, forward, uh, uh, while I forward the request to the backend services are also encrypted. Uh, the more important thing is how the clients end up uh, using the applications is they end up using the SSL opting with error networks. We use, we can have multi-domain using SSL and I. Right now I'm doing a default with the virtual services. I create my certificates on my system, which are, uh, I would say self-signed, but I can also import third-party uh, uh, CS certificates that can be used to do SSL offloading and do some advanced uh, settings of what are the ciphers I can use, you know, the, the protocols and things like that. So basically what we are seeing is we are able to offload SSL offloading do an insert cookie, which basically means when the request come for a proxy or a mega IP, uh, each IP is not treated as a request, but each session within that IP is treated as a, as a new request, and we are able to distribute the load properly to different servers. Uh, we can also do a little more uh, informations that we could specifically do for exchange. It could be compression. It could be disabling the wire header, which is important for PCI compliance. You don't see any proxy sees. And we can also do the cache setting, is, which basically enhances the performance of the applications. Right now, we are not doing caching. It is we, we can do specific to different public folders of the uh, action services. So when I will, I'm doing a compression uh, for this application, of course, there were like 1,000 users listed on it. I was able to get a compression of 85%, which is significant. I can also see a little more dashboard right now. I don't have a load on it, but you can create your graphs and you can look into informations like, you know, what were the uh, the connections coming in? A little, you know, I'm still seeing some connections like uh, out there compression ratios uh, to specific times, uh, cache objectives, how the load uh, being distributed between two servers and other functions. So basically what you are able to see is there are multiple uh, if, if uh, what is the response going back so most of the requests that i see is maybe 302 which is the first page and then if there are any 503 or 404 three, three, you know other uh, information of the response code from the http the good thing is you can actually use all the requests that you receive on the load balancer to create uh, user analytics how they are behaving all the requests that comes in you can actually see for example, when I when I do an HTTP request, all the requests are recorded here, and you can send it as this log to your, uh, you know, uh, uh, web UI uh, uh, recorder or web friends kind of things, and you can see what are the requests being coming, who is sending them. We have all informations in terms of, and you can customize this information of how you want to consume them in your system by changing the advanced settings for, I would say log settings so there are in, uh, informations how you want to send the logs you can actually uh, uh, have a, a specific settings of logs that you can create which would be specific to source destination servers and the uri or the user agents that you need to capture and give you more information so right now we did a simple testing of exchange load balancing creating what we did is simple three steps uh, we created the real servers and groups. We created the virtual service, added the SSL, which is just a simple thing, but we can do a lot of layer seven functions as you saw in the policies. Doesn't require much of an I rule on expertise because these are special built-in functions on array networks. You can do a lot of HTTP settings, TCP operations, specific queue setups, advanced ACLs if you need, advanced settings for uh, you know uh, connections per second that should go and uh, uh, DOS v DOS profile. So. With that, uh, of course, if you are uh, IPv6, we can do support both uh, IPv4 and IPv6 as a dual stack. This was a small introduction, how we did the load balancing and the different things that uh, we can show you in a quick demo. I hope it was something to your uh, information and just think of it, 
if the if you can improve the performance of your end users maybe it's web application could be exchange could be any uh, anything else like skype for business it could be anything for microsoft or sharepoint uh, that's tremendously useful because you're making nutanix as a platform and then adding other networks to not scale out the application but also enhance the security and the user performance for the application with this i give it back to the uh, to shakti rishi to add if there's anything he wants to add on this great thanks a lot uh, abhishek it was uh, great information that you shared with us um one quick question so your array networks uh, pap v currently runs on atropolis hypervisor i believe it's also runs on esx and hyper v is that correct that's a good question yes so basically if you see uh, the 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 uh, solutions we have our hyper converged uh, information if you see a page here we have a specific page with the nutanix it's uh, on array networks you can actually go from solutions uh spotlight hyper converged and there you will find our more information for nutanix we run our solution for load balancers for uh, vmware ehv and microsoft hyper v and we also support vpn solution which is supported both for ehv and the vmware so you're right we we support different flavors of hypervisor on nutanix platform right and uh, in the deployment mode can it be one arm and can it be in line all all deployment modes are supported or is there any uh, any uh, restriction to that a good question basically networking is uh, very uh, easy to work with you can have one leg solution with which is which is more of a proxy function you receive all the requests within the, on the same interface and you use, use the same interface to send the request back to the servers you can also have in line you can also have uh uh layer 2 ssl uh in line so there are different ways of doing it i would say on nutanix we support both in line and the proxy mode so or one leg solution excellent uh great uh, abhishek thanks a lot that's all uh, i think we uh, have captured everything from a verification standpoint um if anyone would like to uh, can get in touch with array is there um, a, a, a alias that you would like to share Yes, uh, of course. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, the easiest way is to get our sites and request for uh, contact. We have our 30-day uh, trial license. We capture this information, and we we definitely work with our partners and uh, uh, either directly, indirectly with the prospects who want to engage with us. This is uh, available worldwide, and I think if uh, more of the Nutanix uh, partners can see what we can do. they will realize that uh, with the nutanix platform we give them the ease of scaling out which is very important for workloads either is microsoft sap oracle uh, or any web uh, browser application based solutions excellent great thanks a lot uh, for your time abhishek really appreciate it uh, thank you satrishit uh, look forward to talking more thank you bye bye